we thank God for this opportunity to be able to speak into the lives of our young people. Each time I come into a gathering, the first thing I do is to count the number of people there. And once they are up to 12, I tell myself, they are sufficient to change the world. You know why? Because 12 disciples of Jesus change the whole world. So every one of us here today, no matter how young you are, you are a potential world changer. If you believe, say amen. amen. Each of you here, young people look at me today, is qualified to be a leader among your greats, your ignorance, your generation. I'm saying this because it is true. People do not start calling you here and there. If you say yes, the God who created you will say amen. That is the truth. Every generation without a successor, someone who is successful, a chief, a millionaire, an investor, an entrepreneur, whatever you are, and you are successful, and you have no successor, they will fail So if we today, the elders, have succeeded, Forget about all those things they are doing Yes, we don't do it. Well. But the important thing is that we are successful. And if we who are the elders have succeeded, and we have no success of following us, we are failing. That is the reason why the Kinapolitan Dome had this vision to put together this meeting, to challenge our young ones. You can be potential conquerors of this country called the Kinapolitan Dome. You can make a difference here without trying to escape our glory. I want you to believe in yourself, believe in the two put your hands to the plow and work at it. That's why we're here. We're here to motivate us to speak into our lives so that tomorrow will be better than today for you and for yourself. And look at young people who didn't see Nigeria work. My generation saw Nigeria work. We saw Nigeria work. We saw a Nigeria where one era is about 75, uh, uh, one dollar, one dollar, you know how much? 75, so come on. We saw in Nigeria where you take a naira and go to London and buy things from London on the market streets in London, in naira. Because Nigeria had a robust economy. That is Nigeria we knew. And then Nigeria is still too helpful. Then Nigeria can still be rediscovered. By any young people, if you believe what I'm telling you today. When I was in school, when I left school in 1981, I'm sure most of you were not born then. It used to be that in your final year in school, companies will come to interview you, get a job offer before you go for the entire service. If they don't catch you up in your campus, they will catch you in my school. So I went to NIC in, uh, in Medigul those days. And I was told that federal government officials came from Lagos and they were interviewing people for jobs. I didn't go for the first five days. Because I didn't want to work with government. I wanted to work in private sector because it pays more, something like today, when everybody was looking for government job. It paid more to work in private sector than in government. On the last day of that program, somebody came and told me, he said, You've been here for one week. These guys are going to leave. Why don't you go for the interview? At my break time, I just took off. Got the NYC center. As I entered the hall of this, they were already tied on their files. About eight of them, about to go. So they asked me, what did you go for? I said, I came for an interview. They said, this can happen all since Monday. Today, Friday, you're coming. I said, yes, because I was using my office. I said, okay, sit down. As I said, they were just asking questions. I was just asking casually. Casually. It's not like today, when you go to university or for technique. Huh? And you shock yourself out and get a degree. But the problem you pay, you bribe, you speak with lecturers, or you collect a diploma from you and give you a qualification. No, those days you will sweat to get a diploma or a degree. So if you ask 
the question, I will not ask the question. When I finished, you know what I said? They said, we've got the wrong with you. Tied their fat and left Friday. Monday morning, National Concord, first page. Minister of Works, my name was number one. I'm not going to swear, but. Yeah, it's a German man. All you youngest people are doing, you're going to be on the journey. 
God has done it. Get me clear, God has done it. It does not matter what you do with yourself now, you know, when we are going on another one today, if you ask a girl, how old are you? She will say 16. They are calling it 16, it's not so. Next year, how old are you? 17. Then year, how old are you? 18. For like this, how old are you? 19. How old are you? 20. How old are you? 21. After 21, how old are you? 20. How old are you? 19. I never go beyond 21. Meanwhile, lies are turned under their eyes. Meanwhile, pancake is being used to call my fault. And they never grow old. Let me tell you something. You are growing old. You are a journey. And you must understand that this journey is irreversible. What you make with your time now determines where you will be tomorrow. So, the team says, growing from a disciplined youth, a youth was acquired discipline. Here, you are here. I came in here this afternoon. I saw a guy. I saw him stand on the chairman coming forth. And the new student and lecturer coming last. It should be like students should come there first. Chairman comes last by protocol and sits down at the kitchen vessels. It takes discipline to say 12 is 12, 1 is 1, 2 is 2. That is discipline. Discipline. Anybody who lives his life in like African time makes no progress. Want to change African time to many time. And if you say you're from many, and it's like this, you can only say to people, you can do what? What is the, what is the current trend now? now? You can only say to people, you can do what? Go and make a party. <laughs> yeah? Go and do what? Go and make a party. It takes discipline to go and become a successful young adult. And the topic for today says character falls as an obstacle to fulfilling your purpose. Nobody jumps from disciplined youth to success just like that. But we should it. No. No. There are some character traits you must invite to arrive at a destination in the journey to destiny. I don't know whether any of you have read the scripture. Don't mind me, I'm a preacher. I'm a preacher. I'm a preacher. I'm a preacher because any other thing you see that I read here is uh, I doubt. I'm a preacher of the gospel. And I read one place in Psalm 139. Psalm 139. I will just look, look it up as my own anchor for the topic of today. Psalm 139, verse 13 said, You created every part of me. You put me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because you are to be feared. All you do is strange and wonderful. I know it with all my heart. When I was being formed carefully, put together in my mother's womb, when I was going there in secret, you knew I was there. You saw me before I was born. The days allotted to me have all been recorded in your book before any of them ever began. Then you will get testimony. You will say that before I was born, God has already written his name and his days inside you. And God has already written what you will become. Inside you. So as you are sitting there looking at me, everything you will ever be in your life has been shadow. You are not an accident. I'm going to I'm going to only make okay. That is your mother took took him, you know, just tell us and they gave it to you. Your mother may be a secret. But you are not a secret. Hello? God has a purpose for you. Ask me how I know. I know number one because he said he did. I know number two because all of you can be here today, the fingerprints are different. There are not two fingerprints that are same. Which means God took time to design you, God took time to perform you, God took time to create you, God took time to make you an original. There's no photocopy. God does not photocopy. 
to your original. And it's a purpose why God created you. And part of my takeaway from my seminar today is as you go, ask yourself, what is my purpose in life? Why was I created? Am I here to just feel space? No. No. There's a purpose why God created you. And believe me, hear me when you get the word. You are equal to what it takes to become everything that God has planned for you to be. You know, when I read the paper that took me to Canada, where I performed the left concert, but the government gave me something to get for. I was saying, how can the white man write to me and say to me, come and do a paper in Canada, in Montreal? I told my wife, what is it that I know? The white man does not know. And she's the original, and she can come, ask me to come and present the child. And this is what I do. My wife called me and said to me, I school in France. I school in Bible. There are so many things they don't know that we know. So go and write everybody. And then after what has my life, I went to look at the door. When they got to the Canada, they called me. They said, we are taking part of this conference, we'll make it one of our best so far. This was June 2000. I wrote the paper, went to Canada, presented it. I did it in the American government. Was busy looking at the paper, studying it, mapping it. After seven years, he came up with the publication. He said, this article, this article, this concept, is the best one known in the world for dealing with school-based death crimes in the U.S. And the article was based on how I found the discourse in the hotel along the road away there. I went to Kentucky and pointed to school-based death crimes. It worked for them. They put my name there. Today, today, when they train judges along the Yeradua Road, there's a campus, they call it the National Judicial Institute. They train judges every day, every year there. Every year from 2015, I'm invited to go and train judges. Tell judges how to resolve concept, how to resolve disputes. This is my concept. And if my wife didn't tell me to write that paper, I would have missed it. I would have known there's something I have inside my head that the white man does not have. Do you understand? I don't know. But today, that's what I've known for all over the world. Those who hire me to do work. Sometimes they go to internet. Okay, uh, let me see. Did I give you my, my CD? No, you didn't. I didn't give you my CD. You didn't. Oh, my God, you did. You went to internet and I got it. Thank you. I didn't give you the CD. I don't give you the CD. If you won't go to internet. He went and downloaded it and then read it to you. Let me tell you something. You can be greater than that. You can be greater than that. Nigeria is waiting for you to explode, waiting for you to shine. And I believe you will shine in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, I had an interesting experience some days ago. I'm talking about Tractor Falls. I'm just going to take some more time because I know that there are a lot of people about nature of Tractor Falls. So I was asked to collapse that. Yes. So I was asked to collapse collapse that. I had an interesting experience in 2006. A governor in one of the eastern states in Nigeria just put us money into office. They called for a boss to what we call a strategy session in his guest house in Peru. Who are for? My cousin Paul was there. In fact, it was through him that the meeting was called. We go to the guest house. And the two was not telling us how he intends to govern his state. I was asking us for tidbits, what do we think? How can he make progress? And we are talking. I don't feel talking. He looked at us. He said, I can assure you. He said, I can assure you. I won't touch the cobble of the money that belongs to my state. But what's my enemy? See, I, in every major currency in this world, I'll talk about it. I'm going to tell you. See, in every major currency in this world, call it yen, call it dollar, call it pound, any major currency in this world, I will talk about it. So, will I touch my state's money if you want? Instead of me touching that state's money, 
Let my children die. Let my children die. I said, the answer is, he said, how should we do it? And if people say, he said, I'm going to punch you this point, let me die. Why are you so sure that with your children? They should die. He said, because my children will protect my future. If they are so important to me, that tells you I will never be tempted to talk my second of money. I will let you. Fast forward to some months after. They have a time in Nicoba, but they want to build his threats in the same country. And everyone who's a contractor should have died. I was a contractor. You let me know now. I was in the project in Pompey, Nigeria, I was a contractor. I went to a hotel. Went to a hotel. I said, let me do this pricing because I'm a curious. I was trained in pricing from the conference. So let me put it in such a way that will come out as the lowest tenderness. So that nobody can price go an option. I will get the job. I want to use a unique way. I call it resource scheduling. I price the contract according to man, man hours of labor, according to materials, cement and bags, and all those kind of things. When I got the material cost, I just added 50%. 50%, no contractor, no contract, no sales contract, and I can go for my and so I turn that to the door, the neighbor of the other when they open this. And the government invited us, oh, the lowest. They don't tell us the last one, they say the company, the lowest. That's how we invited them to the discussion. In that discussion, in the general document they gave to us, they said they would pay up to 5% advance benefits to start with. Based on that, we'll take that, remember? Because I spent the some money for the government to augment the credit, they do the job. And then he called us for the decision. Two of us went there. He said, I've seen that they're telling you the lowest. We said, Yes. He said, Well, let me tell you one thing. I don't have to come to pay you at an advance payment. I can only pay you 50%. I looked at my other, but that's not me. You don't have to go to the consumer to speak. He said, is there nothing you give to somebody who facilitated the job for you? Don't you give something to a facilitator? Confidential something you give someone who facilitated the job for you. I will think to myself, this job will price at the lowest possible profit margin. What do we do? My job I'm going to do. Tell me, brother. Wait up. He said, how much profit margin do you have on the job? I said, 10%. He said, I'm going to discount, I'm going to give up 5%. So our profit money will not be 10%. He said, Kai, this is a difficult one. But you are the other. He's with you. We went back. We said, Your Excellency, we can give you 5% discount. I you know what to do. He brought up that contract that we did. Put it on the back of the page of the contract. Last, the last page said, discount it here. Yes. So this comes here. I was looking at him, but looking at me. By himself, he spent the road. Contracts on less than 5%. Put the figure on the side. I have no contracts where governors will ask double the price. Price will say increases for me. This is my first time of coming to a place where a CEO of the state. Collecting this gun and passing it on to the government. Not for the pocket. That's what's happening. I let that be the very part. Because it was my first time and I've never seen it again. That governor stopped my mind. His proficiency, his commitment, his integrity profile stopped my mind. That governor is who? Go for the I'm sick of the letter about this. What is it? So if he has come all this way in 2006, do it like that. Don't ever think he's stingy. Huh? You know, stinginess has become a criteria now for good, good, good governance. Yeah? People are like that in the middle of us. Sir? People are not taking away from us. They say stinging 
years as a criteria for profitable government. government, profitable government. Because one man stopped his God. I hear so many things be happening now, so many songs. We're going to give shisha. We're going to give shisha. We're going to give shisha. Because somebody said, others say, I cannot. Let me tell you something. Success, take away success, original success, is meant for those who dare to be different. It's meant for those who walk the narrow way of life, not the broad way of peace. It's meant for those who can say, I am different, and I'm not ashamed of being different. What I say today, my young ones, is that I want to go back to the blueprint of life. Look up your mind. Say to yourself, this is what I will do. So, number one flaw that you want to deal with in a trajectory as you climb to success, if you want to succeed in life, number one flaw you want to deal with is lack of integrity. Integrity. Integrity means, you know, in the name, as well, we say it. One car. Man, one. One. Man, one. That's how we say it. So long, no good. It's no good. One more time, so long, no good. It's no good. No. Integrity is what you say. It's what you do. What you talk is how you walk. That's the thing. So young people, number one flaw, number one character flaw you must deal with is lack of integrity. Let your yes be yes. And let your no be no. Yes. We must begin from there. A personal commitment to making my yes, yes. And making my no, no. Begin from where? Begin from where? Today. Today. If there's someone who just came here before, who knows what they before, today you must make up your mind. Say my yes, my yes, my no, my no. So help me God. Hello. Integrity. Proverbs chapter fourteen, verse thirty-four. Proverbs in the Bible. Oh, Chapter 14, verse 34. He says, Righteousness does what? Exalt a nation. But sin is a reproach. Put it this way. Righteousness exalts a nation. But sin will drive you down. That's the big issue. That's the big issue. It is better to fail the degree exams with honor. No matter what, are you listening to me? It's better to fail with honor than to pass with dishonor. It's better to fail with honor and repeat than to pass with dishonor because we are not strapped with natural or right their way. It's better to fail with honor. Than to pass this home. It's one of those great, great words by the Senate Speaker. He said, I would have failed the election with the writing. Read it. Yes. He said, I would have failed with the writing that pass with the wrong thing. So, integrity. Integrity means one thing. actually the root meaning of integrity. Integral. One meaning, one whole, one unit. That was the means. In other words, you are not in your parents' house doing righteous girl, righteous boy. But outside the campus, they're different. That's absolutely not the case. Tell me to me that what you are at home is what you are. It's cool. When they open you up, there's no mixture, no adaptation. You are one, all the same. If you are bad, you are bad too. If they are good, they are good too. That's integrity. No mixture. So every person who wants to, every young person, who wants to aspire to greatness, who wants to become part of the new agenda from name that we are trying to create, this is a small community. 
Hello? And they yeah, maybe it's a small community. Compared to the Indian family. And it's a large community. Yeah, and then they just feel sitting at the bottom of the Now, it can't even hear because I don't know what I mean. If not, they can swallow the whole thing down. You understand? But who is a small town that does big things? Yes. Small town that does big things. And we are trusting God to create a community of young people who are going to take over from where we are today. Who are going to become world leaders? Who are going to travel abroad? You know, in our auditorium, that's our achievement. We talk about opportunities for going abroad, being prayed, and so on. Even so much. Our people, we are willing to put that money by God's grace to say, go out to But no, I want to govern and excel. It's not for you to excel and stay there. Huh? It's for you to excel and do what? Huh? Become an impatriate. You know the, what they call them? Like impatriates. An impatriate. Huh? Become an impatriate. Yes, do work on integration. You can stay there, do business, work. But you don't know where you're going from. Right? That everything you're making there is because somebody puts the sacrifice for it and they say, okay, go there. They come back and make their own contribution. You understand? Know, we are willing to do that. There's so much money we waste. We spend recklessly that if we prune, like uh, Mr. Stingy, if we prune them off, we can make money available for human resources to the like I said, they're generally where they were. You go there, excel, and do back on integration. Bring something back to the community, that's essential. That's the reason we're here. So, number one is integrity. Number two is entitlement mentality. Entitlement mentality. Young people are, in fact, most, most young people. I dream by this mentality. I'm entitled to this. Am I not supposed to have this? Somebody asked the father. When are they making money? Where were you? When are they making money? Where were you? You're not coming here to harass my life. I'm entitled to live like this. I'm entitled to dress like this. I'm entitled to that little kind of better. My friend, entitlement at whose expense? At whose expense? At whose expense? I want every young person here to know that this life will not owe you anything. This life will not owe you anything. Anything you're going to be in life will be given more than what you make up yourself. And people will not come to support you. So, punish these thoughts. Punish to the mind that because my parents are rich, I'm entitled to be rich. Who told you that? Who told you that? Their parents are rich, therefore you're entitled to be rich. You don't know what that is. And some parents make mistakes. Some parents, like myself, make mistakes. We say because we so far and so far and so far, I don't want my child to suffer. Uh, it's not true. Yeah! So why was my child so far? When I so far and so far, and I make money, I want my children's life to be easy. Bro. My first son, who lives in Canada now with his family, when he finished school, was going to go to university. I said he wanted to come and stay with me. I didn't think he was going to there. I thought I was working here. To so spend the weekend with me here. And in the one day, he doesn't ask me for money. For money. See that they want money. I said to him, and he knows because he's going to be a kid. And if you try, you'll collect money. Because you're going to be a kid. 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 Oh, well, you're going to be a kid. Because you're going to be a kid. Oh, that really go, you go to cash. You go to the tree, you get up and get up and get up and get up. I took it as a group where we were working, we were building a house for somebody. I got to the side, I called the head of the work. I said, this boy is my son. He wants money. He will never have work to do. Any amount of money you pay the price, end of the day, pay him. He said, yes, sir. When I came to 
came up with me. His head was covered with cement. <laughs> then to do. I said, when you go back home, you come back. Every day I would come back inside. Go to my office. He would sit in sand, carrying balls, you know those kind of dirty jobs. The one I called me one day, I said, where's my son? I said, come to the video, you see where he is. When she came, I took her to the side. And she saw her son, shift his sand, with dust all over his body. She's like, she's like, I <laughs> The devil, my son, into me. That was his dream. And the boy came to work where the mother was. And handed over to her the whole money in the other end. He said, Mom, this is for you. I was in a cry. You are not paying this money. I will give it to God as an offering. It's my son's sweat. He had put him there. He didn't come to give me the money. <laughs> What was I trying to do? To teach him a lesson in hard work and discipline. Today, when I see his CV, I said, I see his CV. Let's look at it. You said from this moment to this moment, I was a side man of the Lebanon. At the side of the school. You see me? You'll be surprised that some people will hire him because of that. Because they've been low before. They can afford to go low. So when he gets high, he must steal. Very crucial. When he finished his side, I asked him one day, I said, My son, how, how do you feel? He said, I feel excited only any my own money for the first time. My own money for the first time, I feel excited. You have dignity level. Don't say you're tired because your parents are, yeah, they have cars. John can be a car driver. No. Fred. You won't die. It's part of discipline for where you're going. One day I was in the back trying to get us As I wrote my name, I was back on my check. The man standing behind me saw my name. He said, Are you fighting my son? I said, Yes. He said, Are you the person who killed the food for me? I told him that I saw who walked the Torah sent. I said, yes. You know, even when I was walking there, one day, the children, I came to the side. They, they surrounded me. The Lord was surrounded me. They said, well, we had this to the I said, yes. And they said, I need a soft fire like this. You know who you are going to be? You know who? That's for the whole unity of this company. That's something and something like this. You know who? I had to tell him, I said, how many months do you want to carry him? He said, nine months. I said, how many months do you don't want to carry him? He said, nine months. I said, what's the difference between you and him? He said, it's true. It's true. So if you can be able to get the number. So the man standing behind me in the van said, why did the man who came to the food hospital with you and told us about how you brought yourself to the society in the level up? I said, yes, I'm one. He said, that's true. He said, I had me. One that I told my first story. <laughs> he said today he's a manager in my estate development company. But he started by being a side woman. And I was inspired when I heard you say it. No one can tell how you are the investment. So young people, punch that sentiment of entitlement mentality. If you are say to you, so can you please go to work it? Number three, I was not very soon now. Number three, false values. False values. False values. False values. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 5, number 20, he said, Woe unto that person who calls to evil and calls evil to good. Woe unto that young girl or young man who calls to evil and calls evil good. False values. Our young people today, I'm so sorry to say it, are driven essentially by false values. Materialistic tendency. Echo the Korean world. Korean people don't have 
They say, go do. The young man comes to the boss, he says, do you manage? The first one asks, you got an idea, what do you got? Do you got them? Huh? Every little woman. What is his death worth? And your friends will tell you, that man is a poor man. He's a poor man. Why do you want to go and suffer yourself? False values. A man I know when I was going to a girl, I said to her, son, I want to marry you. He said, I want to go to the house. I want to visit the house. They did the first for the visit. They don't want to visit the house. I packed away everything. I went and brought benches. All the television, all the music they had, they packed it away. Put benches, pack of benches in the bottom. One of the girls came to the bottom and saw the benches. We just went to the room. So to the room. When she left, and the young man met her later, and said, What is your job about the decision? He said, I prayed about it. And I'm not feeling led to marry her. We need to speak across that. I prayed about it. And I'm not feeling led to marry you. So perish your thoughts. You must be okay. Fine. That's all right. You know what I'm supposed to have another girl. See that girl, saw him, summarized him, that this man, this is what he this is level. And I agree. And I agree. The next time she came to the start, she saw a well furnished house. Did you have all this before? Say yes. I had that because you know you are writing an example. Because marriage is not simple, it's for life. I want to mention that the person who has to marry, go marry me for better or worse. No, you pretty much have to do it. You don't say for better for worse, you say for better for best. Marriage is for better for best. What if you go from better to best? You stay. What if you go from best to better for worse? You leave. You say, I didn't sign for worse. I said, better for best. Yes. And he married a young girl. The next week, that girl whom he proposed before went to town. She said, My friend stole my husband from me. <laughs> my friend stole my husband from me. This man was my husband and she took him away. Lie. False values. Don't look at the pancake that people put on their faces. Pancake. Yeah, it's only one I forget. What do you call it? Huh? No, okay. Somebody. Who said something like that? What do you call it, Paget? Huh? I get that. What do you call it, Paget? Makeup. That's the name. Makeup. What do you mean by makeup? What is the foundation of makeup? You knew something was wrong before. Something was different before. So you're trying to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It is better for you to be natural. Let's see you the way you are. Let's love you the way you are. Let's marry you the way you are. Don't take care after the wedding. Eh? The man is coming out when you sleep. You do. And the salad will come out of this place. What the? I didn't marry. Oh, you saw somebody who left off the wedding. The who you are. For the man. Yeah, I'm right now. I'm right now. Lack of diligent labor. We are living in a lazy generation. Lazy generation. Generation of young people that don't want to work. They don't want a job. They want to live. They want to live well. A lazy generation. People who listen to me, laziness does not talk anybody anywhere. All of them are beginning to do what we call intentional living. That is, living by the intent, day and day. How many of you do what they call checklist every day? You know, the old men. Checklist. Every morning, you look at the people, you talk you say, the checklist of what I'm going to do today. Number one, number two, this, number three, this, number four, this. Checklist. And everyone you achieve, you take it off. End of the day, you will show that you spent your life that day. Yeah? On some strong achievements. Check this. The one you try and you that you succeed, you can't see somewhere and say go to the next day. That way you manage your time and your life intentionally. 
intentional. And before you know it, everything you map out to achieve in your life, you achieve it. When I left school, I did what? I had what I call a 10 year plan in my life. 10 year development plan. Beginning from 1982 to 1992. I said to myself, first two years, I will have my professional exams and pass the gate register as a professional college of learning. Then I'll go back to university and withdraw. Then I will do this. Then I'll do that. I wrote it out in 1982. That shaped my life. Instead of finding the club. The first time I should be club, it was for something. It shaped my life. I didn't have time to waste. I was a pastor, I was a preacher, I was heading a group, a post of friend in Kaduna, I would go to school. No time to waste. After 10 years, I look at that thing and achieve every one of those things I listed. I recommend it to you. I recommend it to you. I recommend it to you. Do check this. There's no place in this life for somebody who does not live. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 23. I like this scripture because it tells me something that is real, contrary to what I hear every day. The first chapter of Proverbs, verse 23. He says, in every level, there's what? Huh? There's what? There's profit. That's the word. In every level. Yes, sir. Life will not kill a man. In every level, there's profit. So apply yourself to labor. Diligent labor. The Bible says, whatever your heart finds to do, do it hard. Do it with all your minds. Whatever your heart finds to do, if you're a student, study hard. If you sell a car, sell it hard. Whatever your hand has to do, be what? Do it with all your minds. There is profit in level. There is dignity in level. Don't ever find yourself like I do. Look at this book here. We tend to have that book in the young world. You know why? Because book readers ultimately become leaders. Every leader. Is a leader. I told myself I was growing up. Every week, I read a book. Every year, I read 52 books. Every year, I read 52 books. Because every week, I read a book. In my toilet, there's a book there. In my car, there's a book there. In the bedroom, there's a book there. In my office, there's a book. If I go to the toilet, instead of wasting time, we book, 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 book. As I'm doing that, I'm reading. What I think I don't know about. Go to my school. Anyone, anytime I'm there, I'm reading. If I enter to my car, there's a book there. Maybe one chapter I'm there, I'll read it across. Enter to my office, and I feel free, I'll read. Within a year, I'm going to do books. You won't know. Okay, you touch me. What is scratch me when I start talking? What is scratch me when I start talking? And you ask me, how do you pay me? You know, I charge that much as 100,000 an hour. In fact, there was a time I tried, he said, come on, for, for, for one hour. I said, no, I'm going to go to the menu. He said, no, 200,000 naira for one hour of speech. They won't tell you, they won't pay that kind of money if you are paying pay the sentence. No. You are paying me 200,000 for speaking for one hour. You got that one hour by speaking. You know what you're going to get from it. Do you understand? And he came from the fact that I stopped my head. Books. What I can do, reading this, go to the these books. Young people, I'll challenge you. Be like me. Be like me. Make it important if you can read 52 books, at least read 25. In a year. You understand? You will see the kind of transformation as you talk to your friends. The difference will be Because knowledge pays. Knowledge pays. Finally, finally, I will say to you, mentorship. Mentorship. 
What I need tonight is to provoke mentorship. To tell you if this person can do it, you also can do it. You can do it. I don't know how many degrees this man, this clever man, this clever boy, you know. He promised to be the God in my own days. The only thing is the goals. God does not pass. He said, look, very fantastic to be back. We call it my own days. I think if one of the most, most the Greek people are named, this credit. I don't know how many now, but it's three or four. But it's good. It's good. Give what I listen. Give a gift. Give forever. What kind of thing? Give forever. When you have to love give it. Oh, my God. Thank you. 
that you do for that. By the fourth time, everything in those books in that like that picture. They are still there. Like pictures. After 11 months, I covered the syllabus of five years. After 11 months, I went to this one. What is those people talking about? I have three credits and three distinctions.